Hey everyone and welcome back to my how to zine mini series. So far we have been introduced to zines, looked at designing a front cover, prepared images for printing and popped images and text into InDesign. So now we add the most important part and the most frustrating part, printing. So I'd spent a few days designing and creating my zine and now comes the easy part right? I just press this button and... Okay, so printing is a lot harder than I thought it was. It was somewhere in between the fourth and fifth hour of frustrating print test. But my boyfriend turned to me and said, I told you you should have outsourced. Like, not cool bro, not cool. The good news is I learned a whole bunch and I feel a lot more comfortable printing. So let's start with the basics. You need your printer. Mine's a Canon 7250. If you've decided to outsource, or even if you're doing this at home, I would highly suggest grabbing a few free sample packs from printers. I found a couple online when I thought I was going to outsource and I ordered these little packs of paper. So even though I decided to do it myself in the end, these packs were really helpful because I could see and feel the difference between silk, uncoated, coated, gloss, recycled, and I could also find out just how thick 270 GSM was and 300 GSM and 120 GSM, you get the picture. Before I didn't know anything about paper, but with these little packs it makes it a lot easier to find out what you need. So I knew nothing about paperweight. I went onto Etsy and I looked at descriptions for different zines. So while they varied a bit, the most popular inside weight of the paper was like 120 GSM, like a really nice letterhead. And then the outside covers tended to be about 300 GSM, kind of like an expensive airline magazine cover. And for paper finish, I think it's all about personal preference really. Uh, silk feels really nice, the glossy looks really swish but it kind of catches the light and uncoated has that really handmade feel. I decided to get 120 GSM recycled paper for the insides. So because my zine is about endangered animals, I thought it was fitting that the paper that it was printed on would be helpful for the environment. I also really love the texture and the feel of the recycled paper. So you got your paper and you printed some stuff out but the prints are washed out or they're the wrong colour. So now come the print tests. I wasted a lot of paper before I realised I could run colour matching tests on my printer, but every printer is different so check your manufacturer or have a look online on how to do this on your printer. But some simple things that are probably universal that you could check is the printer set to Photoshop matches the colours or does the printer decide the colours. So the best option is to use Photoshop matches the colours and then you can probably pick your printer from this list, which makes it pretty simple. So if the colours are off, you can do a colour test like this, and you get these cool little thumbnails which help you decide if you need to move the blue up or take the red down, etc. So you just match the image on the screen to the closest thumbnail, and then you can fiddle with these colours here. I actually didn't find this that helpful because the colour on the monitors are always going to look more vibrant because it's backlit. So it's really a trial and error kind of thing. And I did get there in the end. Photoshop and InDesign also use the same colour engine. So I didn't see any change in colour printing from one program to the other. So if you fix it in one, it'll be fixed in the other. So one of the main things to think about is if your printer does duplex printing. This is where the printer automatically prints on both sides. And was one of the reasons why I got this printer in the first place because it does that. If your printer doesn't do duplex printing, you're just going to have to manually flip your paper over to print double sided. Another thing to think about is if your printer does borderless printing, that's where you can print right up to the edge of the page. So this may be super helpful if you want to have like a photo zine and you want your photos to go all the way to the edge. So my printer does borderless printing, but it can't print borderless and duplex at the same time. So I decided to keep a border around my images on the inner pages to make the process more simple. And this is an idea of how many print tests I did to get all of this right. So if you struggle with this stuff, you're not alone. But I feel so much more comfortable with using my printer now and Photoshop and figuring it all out. So it was a really good learning experience, even though I went through half the ink cartridges to do it. And then there's uh, Creep. So Creep is a bit of a weird one. You see how the pages shift when you fold lots of them together? This is what creep is and it's something you have to think about before you print. Basically the inner pages are going to be longer than the outer pages. If you have something close to the edge and you trim it, it's going to get cut off. So that's where you adjust your creep. Basically I wanted the same space of border around all of my images on all of the pages. But if I didn't allow for creep and then trimmed my pages, the border would get really thin or it would cut into the actual image. So creep was actually a really tough topic for me to get my head around. I still don't really understand it and I had to search a lot of forums online to find 
a kind of solution that I could follow. I'll add the link below in case you guys are interested. So that was the whole printer malarkey. Again, if you're outsourcing, all of this will be taken care of. But if you're up for a challenge, I think doing it yourself is a great way to learn. And that was today's video. Tomorrow we're going to be putting our zine together, which is the most exciting part. So check back then. Thanks for watching. Bye.